Hey Floss Two, Itty Bitty Stitchy here with an Itty Bitty Update at a new location. I'm currently in my new Stitchy spot. Um, my mom is moving, so she has to sell like everything. And of course, as kids, got first pick on what kind of stuff we wanted to keep. And one of the things was a new recliner for my husband. So that means my recliner got moved to the other side of the living room. So his is in front of the TV. So I can sit here and stitch and not have people complain to me that the above lights are too bright while they're watching TV. So my new stitchy spot is by my bookshelf. This has another one on the other side of the fireplace. This rock walls fireplace. Um, so originally, all my husband's and the boys' stuff was on this, like in this bookshelf, and all my stuff was over there. So I switched it since this is now going to be my little hidey hole, stitchy corner. So today is August first, and yes, the summer is coming to an end. Um, I'm not one of those parents who hate summertime because the kids are always home because I'm a homeschool mom so my kids are always home period um, even then when my kids were in public school I loved summertime because that means my boys were with me all the time uh, we're a very very close-knit family so that really helps you know yeah we piss each other off we get annoyed by each other but that's part of being a family like it's a give-and-take so, um, yes, this is my stitchy spot. Um, my comfy recliner, comfy blanket is always needed. Um, depending on what I'm stitching on, depends if I have a dark fabric or a light fabric blanket to use. Ooh, look, it does pretty little. Um, so, like if I'm working on a light fabric, then I have a dark blanket underneath. If I'm working on the dark fabric, I have a light blanket underneath. I do like my house very cold, so. I get to use my blankets because I love my blankets. Now, we are here for stitching. Um, so as y'all all know, the past few weeks, I have been working on Claire and Doogie, also known as The Favorite by Omar Ryan. Um, it is my first and only hade at the moment. And hold on, me and my boxes. Okay, baby, I'll be up in a minute. Can you play quietly? Thank you. My boys are upstairs reorganizing all of their different Skylanders. So we have a predicament with Claire and Doogie. And I kind of need y'all's help. I've been talking with my gang, so with Kellyanne and with Michelle Bendy Stitchy and with Drew Darling um, over at Weasley Studios. So here is Claire and Doogie. We all know them, we all love them. If there was ever a picture to depict me and my personality to the T, this would be it. Little bitty girl who likes to be pretty but loves all things dark and grim and creepy and spooky and whatever. Um, I don't think there's ever been a stitchy piece to ever depict my personality perfectly. And I'm pretty sure my husband would agree with me 110%. Um, so, I know I said I wanted to do a page finish before I moved on to anything else. But here's the problem, guys. This piece of fabric is huge. This is all going to be Claire Doogie. I'm working on page one, which is way up here. And as y'all can see, it's super tiny, which of course, I know it's a hade. Hades are huge. I'm not complaining that it is such a huge piece. I am complaining about this fabric. I have other 28 counts that I can stitch two over two and it looked wonderful. Um, but for some reason, this Lugana, it looks horrible if I do two over two. Um, so Alice was actually my first one to stitch on this Lugana and I have to do it one over one full cross, which is fine. I, I don't care about doing full cross. I'd rather do full cross than tent, even though tent is a lot quicker, but 
it's really hard because some of the colors completely blend in with this fabric, like completely. I love these colors. They're very muted. They're very beautiful. They're very soft. Um, I think I'm scrapping it. The only way I will not scrap this fabric is if I just stitch Claire and Doogie, no background. If I just do Claire and Doogie, no background, I will keep it on this fabric. But I am contemplating getting um, Ancient by Picture This Plus. 28 count, this is 28 count Lugana, and I can't stand it. But if I get Ancient in 28 count, not in Lugana, I think I'll be able to stitch the entire thing, background included, and be so happy with it. Um, and hopefully do it two over two. Other than that, I cannot stand stitching on this fabric. <laughs> it is killing me. And these stitches are extremely, extremely tiny. Because it's one over one full cross. And I feel when you do one, like when you just do one, it makes your back look hideous. My backs have never been super neat, but I've been trying to work on that. But, oh, my lanta. I don't know, guys. So Claire and Doogie is in timeout until I can fully figure out what I want to do with them. If you have any suggestions, whether I just keep them... I don't know. I don't. I really don't want to stitch on that fabric. I think I'm gonna wait till Birthmas, my birthday, Christmas, because I'm a December baby. I think I'm gonna wait till Birthmas to get new fabric for them, and then just restart. We are actually like. Here's my shelves. Here's see my shelves. It has all my stuff. Yeah. Okay. Where were you? Okay. So. That was Claire and Doogie. Um, leave me a comment below if you have had any problems with stitching two over two on 28 count Lugana, please. Uh, I honestly believe it's just the fact that it's Lugana because I have other 28 counts that are not Lugana. Um, I can't tell you, maybe even weave or something like that, that I have no problem with. Um, so yeah, just let me know if you've had problem with Lugana. Maybe I'm just not a Lugana girl. Maybe that's all it is. You know, like some people love Lugana, some people don't. Um, so maybe it's just something like that. Now, for the next one, the one I worked on all last week was Tapestry by Ink Circles. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Tapestries by Ink Circles. A lot of people have done this one and finished. A lot of people are still stitching on it. Here is, no glare, thank you. No glare, thank you. Here's what it looks like. I am starting from the center. Yeah, you can see it, it's focused. Whee! It almost tumped. I'm um, working from the center and flowering out. Um, before I picked it up, I did not have all of these blues finished. I think I just had that one done. And all this center part and these long green bits. Everything else is new. I'm like falling out of my chair. I'm gonna have to reposition again. I love these. I think they're irises. Am I right on the flowers? Um, so I got this little birdie done. Pretty cute. Love these colors. This this blue gray or not purple gray right here. It is number DMC three eighteen. Is totally my new favorite color. And I'm not a big purple girl. Love it. Love it. Super happy with this. I did not want to put it away. Did not. But I did put it away because I gave it a full week and I feel like um, 
Let me get up and put this up real quick. I feel like um, this next one I'm about to show y'all has not got a lot of love. I think a lot of people tend to forget about this stitching piece, which kind of makes me sad because it's so beautiful. So I did bring it back out. I'm working on it. I'm very excited. It has a lot of first for me in it. So without further ado, the next thing I'm working on is, this week is gonna be Peacock Mandala by Northern Expressions Needlework. Let's see if I can't get in close. So they have two versions of this. You can either do the full cross stitch version where it's just full cross stitch and um, beads, or you can do the one that I grabbed, which is cross stitch and specialty stitches with the beads. So before I show you where I'm at, the cool thing about these people is they actually included a packet that shows you like the different, like how to do the different specialty stitches. Um, there's uh, the Jessica stitch. We've got Ray stitch, satin stitch, partial diamond eyelet, a full diamond eyelet, rice stitch. Um, round eyelet, upper right Jessica triangle. an elongated Jessica triangle. I'm stoked because this is beautiful. Some beautiful stuff going on. So, oh, lost. And look, it's got like Mardi Gras colors. Mardi Gras, any of y'all know Louisiana? They're Mardi Gras traditions. So here it is, look at this sparkly fabric. Oh my gosh. And my peacock is super sparkly. You like it, Dax? <laughs> so here we have where I'm working on. I'm working on all the cross stitch first. It says do all the, um, complete all the full cross stitch. And then I will start working on, I believe some of the specialty stitches. It tells you in order like how to do it step by step. A lot like a chatelaine. Um, this is, my mini version of a Chatelaine, um, gearing up to see if I'm brave enough to actually take on a full on like gigantic Chatelaine. So I just wanted to start small and they have a lot of cool ones. So this is the Peacock Mandala. I think they have like a Phoenix one. Oh my gosh, that Phoenix one is gorgeous. I wish I had seen it. I love Peacock so. Um, I, I really do. I grew up with some family friends out at the lake who actually had a bunch of pet peacocks. <laughs> they sound horrible. They look beautiful and they sound absolutely hideous. Um, so yes, this is Peacock Mandala with my opalescent fabric by Under the Sea Fabrics. And yes, I'm just working on the cross stitch part of the mandala, the outlining of the mandala. Um, so this is my first cross stitch that's going to have specialty stitches, the first one on opalescent and the first one with beads. Yes, lots of first with this Peacock Mandala. So that is what I'm currently working on this week. Um, next week, I'm probably gonna bring out Kraken because I really, really miss Kraken and I'm really wanting to make some progress on it. Um, so now that I have all my cross stitch chit chat out of the way, I want to show y'all um, a book recommendation I have in case you're curious I'm not gonna give like a review on it um, but this is a book that one of my son my oldest son Bain one of his teachers I think it was his second grade teacher she was in a book club and she told me about it and she was like hey you should really read this book it's a really good book so I read it and I was like oh my gosh I love it and there's actually a second one and then um, like a spinoff, not really a spinoff, but it's a more in depth on one character that's mentioned. Um, so it's not really part of the story. Supposedly he's coming out with a third book in this series. So it's um, Name of the Wind by, whoa, glare, by Patrick Rothfuss. 
He is very active on his Facebook page. Mm, I believe he's got a website. But yes, um, so Night of the Wind, or The Name of the Wind, sorry. The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Very, very highly recommend this. Um, the next one in the series is The Wise Man's Fear. A lot of people did not like the second book, um, but they loved the first book, so they like made their way through the second book. And hopefully they, um, the third book is really good, like the first book was. I didn't mind the second one. I didn't, obviously I didn't think it was as good as the first one. Uh, the second one kind of lingered too long in a certain area that I felt didn't, wasn't necessary. <laughs> Um, I understand that it was a character um, quality build for the main guy, but you can tell a man wrote it. So, yes, Name of the Wind. Holy cow. Read this book. Super good. Let me know if you like it. If you've already read it, let me know if you enjoyed it. Um, and if you can recommend any others like this. That would be nice. I would appreciate that very much. Um, so as y'all know, book recommendation out of the way. As y'all know, it's August 1st and summer is winding down. I really hope everybody has stayed cool. Uh, Cause I know here in South Texas, Coastal Bend, we are cooking like so hot. We have easily hit the triple digits every day no problem without a sweat um even though our temperatures might read mid to high 90s and sometimes even hitting in the actual hundreds throw our heat index on top of that <laughs> and our heat index can raise it anywhere between five and ten degrees so that gets kind of hot and we have very very high humidity being on the coast um, so usually our humidity is no lower than 50 and usually hits anywhere in the high 80s to 90s uh, one day we were actually moving a ton of furniture um, like I said my mom's moving so we got a bunch of furniture from her well we got basically a new bedroom set for our kids and they um, had like a solid wood bunk beds upstairs that we had to move downstairs and then move all the new furniture upstairs. Well that day the um, temperatures were 105 in the shade without the heat index. So it was 105 in the shade and we looked up the heat index. Sure enough it was 116 outside and then we checked the humidity and it was 85. Some hot stuff like that was to me, I, I want to put money on I would put money on it. That was the hottest day this year. <sighs> I'm telling you, this South Texas heat and humidity will get you. Um, so please stay hydrated, stay cool, stay inside if you can between 2 and 4, which are the biggest heat areas of the day, 4 being the heat of the day. Um, yeah, stay cool, guys. It's not worth it. Um, with August coming, that means the end of summer, school is starting up for a lot of public schools. We, of course, homeschool, so we are, we still have stuff coming up. You know, we are gearing up for our homeschool co-op to start up again. I am one of the core members, and um, I'm very excited. We have two moms who are interested in joining our co-op, and both of them have a son with autism. And I, being the core member and a mom with a son who has autism and a son who has a special diagnosis, um, a rare disease, auto-inflammatory disease, um, a lot of the moms with special needs children, whether it be neurological or something else, they usually like send them my way and I like take them under my wing and be like, okay. Um, but this is the first time that we're going to have anybody with autism join the co-op and I'm really, really excited for my son to make new friends who are just like him. 
Uh, I think it's really important to, that they know that they are not alone. They are not the only ones who have autism and they are just like every other kid. But I really want to put together some sensory play dates with them. Sort of a way to help them learn different social situations. Maybe play play out some of them just so because I mean we really do we have to literally teach them how to act in different social situations. Um, and what better way than to actually be in that situation to learn? Uh, I also want to do like some sensory fun things like you know digging through dry rice or those little water those little beads you add water to and they're like weird feeling but cool. Um, that helps them a lot overcome different issues that they might have. Uh, I know my son Slade had a huge um, texture issue in his with his mouth. Um, he couldn't eat meat. He hated the feel of meat in his mouth. And so getting him to eat meat was quite a struggle, but he does now. Not you. <laughs> okay, you're just staring at me. <laughs> Daxton's here playing Fallout. Um, so yes, co-op is about to start up, which means I got a new planner for the year. It says I'm okay with my crazy. See? Super cute. Got it at Walmart. It's got the calendar and you can have notes and then it breaks it down to the weeks. What else? Yeah, it just breaks it down by weeks. Then you have your other months. Nothing big, nothing fancy, because I don't really need something big and fancy. Just a little bit from Walmart. <sighs> Still have not started anything on the quilts yet. I did go out and buy a bunch of pins. I do want to play around with patterns. Um, like I showed you, I have that spy strap one. I have that one I drew up. I have a book way up there that um, has different quilts. It's quite an old version too, so I'm kind of excited about that because I really do enjoy the older types of quilts. Um, not the fun, cutesy, let's put a bunch of elephant-shaped stuff on here. Like I like blocks, <laughs> blocks to put it simply. Um, yes, so that is my itty bitty stitchy update for this week. Um, don't forget, book recommendation, Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Uh, come on, Glare. Uh, the lighting is good for stitching, but not for recording. So I have my, you're like on my ot light, and my ot light is on. So y'all can see everything in true to life form. Yes, with that, I think I'm going to let y'all go. Um, hopefully I can get some stitching done and yes, I hope everybody's stitchy week is going great. I love seeing all y'all's progress on Instagram and in your videos. Uh, my husband's been out of town a lot lately, which means I get to watch all the floss tube and stitch all the things because I can't sleep when he's out of town. So I usually stay up pretty late and stitch and watch floss tube and listen to scary podcast and then make my dog sleep in the bed with me because I'm scared. <laughs> all right, guys, well, I'm gonna let y'all go. May all your stitching dreams come true. <laughs>